Okay, why is the business case for HS2 flawed? It's based on the rather optimistic idea that in the future very large numbers of people are going to travel back and forth by train from London to Birmingham. My reckoning, I think the reckoning of a lot of people, is that that's not going to be the case at all. I think increasingly people will work remotely as broadband access is increased, people will take advantage of it. And the notion of large-scale travel on this line seems to me to be over-optimistic and thoroughly old-fashioned. It's also, by the way, based, the business case, on the idea that at the moment, in travelling back and forth, people are doing no work on the train at all. That seems to me to be a completely fanciful assumption. So on both of those grounds, over-optimism about the future and misunderstanding of the present is simply wrong. Right. Um, can I ask you, why do you think HST Limited and the government are dismissing the idea of the alternatives, which are Rail Package 2 and Flying World Broadband? I think that they're very committed to their own project. I think they want to make the case for the position that they've already decided upon and they're therefore not devoting any significant time or energy to the study of alternatives, lest it detract from their case. But actually, their case is weak. Thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people think that it would be much better incrementally to improve our transport system by other more sustainable and cheaper methods. And therefore, sooner or later, it would make sense for the Department of Transport to get on the page that is occupied by the massive number. And can I also ask you about the environmental case? I obviously am dressed as a butterfly um, for a good reason. Um, you know, obviously, the environmental case has been drawn up as having, it's been suggested it has big flaws. And can you comment on that a bit and why, why that is the case? Yes. As far as we in North Bucks are concerned, there are very large numbers of wildlife sites and ancient woodlands that would be irreparable removed from us. They would be totally destroyed if this project went ahead. I think that when you reflect on the area of standing natural beauty that we have in our midst and the magnificent array of rare and protected species that we've got, we have a duty to keep those areas and those species and for the government to go ahead when, frankly, the beautiful butterflies will be literally trodden on the foot, is reckless in the extreme. It's quite unnecessary. And I would hope that even now, amongst other arguments, the government would bear in mind that local residents do want to protect their wildlife, they do want to protect their habitat, they do want to protect their areas of outstanding natural beauty. And when the critics say, oh, well, they're being nimby, I would argue that if we've got beautiful areas and beautiful species, we have got a duty, not just a right, to conserve them. A steward. Yes, they need to be subject to nurture and husbandry and stewardship, as anybody with the remotest knowledge of conservation could tell you. Otherwise, they will suffer, and in the end, they'll be damaged, reduced in number, or simply destroyed. Mm -hmm. At one fell swoop, the HS2 project would wreck huge numbers of precious species and important sites which local residents treasure. And they've always treasured them. They want to go on with treasure. And I think it does behove a government department not to sniff at, but to be sensitive to and show respect for the wishes of local residents. Thank you. And um, one more question, really. Um, I'm a black hair street. And uh, I'm one of the very rare species of butterfly in the south of England that's diminishing rapidly. Um, and, and we are on the route of the HS2 line. Um, and we might be tiny and we might be a bit invisible, but really, I suppose I'm dressed up here to say today, we're important and we're a bit nervous, actually. Um, what kind of reassurance do you think you can offer us that we, you know, we'll be looked after? If not, how do we get protected? You are a magnificent butterfly. Thank you. You have, frankly, not the foggiest chance whatsoever of survival if this project goes ahead. When you ask me how can you be saved, how can you be 
protected? How can you be preserved for the future? The answer is only if this project is dropped. And I hope that when the government gets the response to its consultation, it will see from that response that there is overwhelming vociferous and reasoned opposition to its case. These arguments have been demolished. The damage the project would do is incalculable. And that, apart from anything else, in terms of simple political judgment, it will be wise for the department to conclude that it's lost the argument and it will abandon its policy. And that will be good for North Parks, good for my constituents, and good for rare species of magnificent butterfly, of which you are a pretty eminent example. I very appreciate it. Thank you very much. <laughs>